In the last video, we found a formula for the area of the Koch snowflake, and we're able to write it as this infinitely long sum. We are adding up an infinite amount of terms. And for this video, we can simplify this and try to make sense of it and hopefully come up with a nice simplified formula where if we know the side length of the original equilateral triangle, we can just plug in that value to find the area of the entire Koch snowflake. So let's start with this formula we found and simplify it a little bit. We can begin by noticing that each of these terms, as we carry this out to infinity, has a square root of 3, has division by 4, and has an s squared in it. Since for each of these factors here in each of the terms, when we actually square this out, we will end up with s squared, at least in the numerator. So we can start by factoring out the square root of 3, s squared, and this division by 4. So let's call all of this a and rewrite this as the square root of 3 over 4 multiplied by s squared. And here we're left with just 1. Here we're left with 3. And we pulled the s squared out, but we still have the 1 over 3 squared. And then from here, we have the 3 times 4. And we would still be left with this expression, or this factor here, 1 over 9 squared. And for the next one, we pulled out everything but the 3 times 4 times 4, which I'll write as 3 times 4 squared. And we would still have 1 over 27 squared. And this sum will continue forever. We don't need to write out this since we can notice the pattern as we have it. So let me close off this set of parentheses. And at this point, we just need to simplify this inside. Now notice that for each of these squared expressions, we have different powers of 3 in the denominator. This is 3 to the first, this is 3 squared, this is 3 cubed. So let's rewrite it using those powers of 3 rather than their actual values. And we can make a little bit of space, and I'll just rewrite this very quickly. Now one of the main reasons that we can rewrite this with the different powers of threes is to notice that the exponents on four, these factors with four, are always one less than the exponent on the three. In fact, you could even have four to the zero power here to match up with the pattern since four to the zero is just one. And if we had the same exponent for the fours, we can actually put them into the parentheses here, and this would become a geometric series that we can actually add up. So the way to increase each of these exponents by one is to multiply all of these terms by four. But we can't just multiply everything by four. We would also have to divide by four. So on the outside, we can divide by four and then on the inside, multiply each of these terms by 4 so that we actually increase the exponent. So let me do that very quickly. In fact, let me make a little bit of space and we can rewrite this with division by 4 on the outside and multiplication by 4, which will distribute to every term on the inside. So let's make some space so that we can actually carry out this calculation, and I will rewrite this. Now, with this rewritten, we can notice that we just multiplied the top and the bottom by 4, since this denominator now has one extra multiplication by 4 there, and we distributed the 4 from the top to each of these terms. And we can see that the exponents now match up with the 4s and the 3s. And from here, we can take all of these terms where we are squaring these different powers of 3 and actually multiply them out, meaning that 1 over 3 squared, 1 third times 1 third, this is just 1 ninth. 
here we have 1 over 3 squared, which is really 1 over 9. And we're squaring that, 1 over 9 times 1 over 9. This is 1 over 81, or 1 over 9 squared. Here we have 1 over 27, since 3 cubed is 27. And we're squaring that, and this is 1 over 729, which is really just 1 over 9 to the third power. And essentially, all of these expressions with the threes in it can be rewritten as fractions with the denominator in different powers of 9. So let's rewrite our formula with these simplifications. And I've simplified this 4 times 4 in the denominator to be 16. And we've replaced all of these squared expressions with their different powers of 9 in the denominator. We have 1 9th here, 1 over 9 squared, 1 over 9 cubed. And notice that the exponents on 9 and 4 match up. And we can rewrite these as their own fractions combined. This one will become 4 over 9. This will be 4 squared over 9 squared. And we can write 4 squared over 9 squared as 4 over 9 squared. This will be 4 to the 3rd over 9 to the 3rd, which is really just 4 over 9 to the 3rd power, and so on. So let's make a little bit more room, and we can continue with this simplification process. We can rewrite all of these terms here with these fractions 4 over 9 raised to various powers. And with this rewritten expression, we can more clearly see what the pattern is. And if we wanted, we could continue this. This is 3 times 4 over 9 to the 4th, and so on. We are still adding up an infinite amount of terms. But at this point, we can focus on this group of terms here, this infinite sum, and notice that this is a geometric series. From one term to the next, we are multiplying by the same number. We are multiplying by 4 over 9. And since we have that common ratio, that same number we're multiplying by to go from one term to the next in the sum, this is what we call a geometric series. And we have techniques for actually adding this up. So let's focus on this now. And we can start by factoring out a 3 from each of these terms. So let's rewrite this down below. We have 3 multiplied by 4 over 9 plus 4 over 9 squared plus 4 over 9 to the third power. And like I mentioned, if we want, we could continue the pattern. And this goes on forever. Now, the infinite sum on the inside, not including this 3, this is our geometric series, which there is actually a fairly straightforward technique for adding this up. And we can apply that technique by first giving this a letter. We can call this S, capital S, for sum. And let's first start by just rewriting this inside. 